What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video, where today we're starting a new series, making iconic movie posters in LEGO. Today I have seven of the most famous movie posters of all time, but before we get started, if you tell me in the comments which movie posters you want to see in a future episode, there's a good chance it'll happen, so let me know your suggestions. With that out of the way, let's jump into it. First we have Inception, directed by Christopher Nolan and released in 2010, and I have to say, out of all the movie posters for today's video, this one is my absolute favorite, so I wanted to start the video with it. It's a large build, about as tall and wide as a 32x32 32 32 base plate. The funnest part about the build was attempting to recreate the perspective of the original poster. In the movie, perception and reality are huge topics, so I wanted to make sure I was able to capture some of that with this build. As you can see, I tried to make the road look like it's running off into the distance and eventually curving up to a 90 degree angle. To make the road like this, I made a slab of dark gray bricks that occasionally has white and yellow plates for the road lines. After building the road, I laid it on its Side and placed it into this black frame. Then I used these wedge plates to gradually make the road thinner over the course of the build, and the road lines gradually grow smaller and closer together as well. As I built the road, I was reminded of those forced perspective assignments that a student might do in art class. On the sides, I didn't have a ton of room since the road takes up the majority of the set, but I still wanted to try to make some of the buildings going off into the distance that we see on the poster, and I've tried to make those get gradually smaller as well. Down at the end of the build, I used multiple hinge bricks and plates to give the road its curve. Moving vertically up the build, you'll see that the road continues along with micro builds for buildings off in the distance behind the characters. I will say for those, I wasn't trying to be super accurate because the buildings on the cover of the original poster are kind of boring, so I just made a variety of different looking buildings like this one that looks like Hogwarts. One of my favorite parts of this build is that you can flip it onto its side and use the vertical portion as a micro Lego city. The minifigures aren't the most accurate, but I used the pieces that I felt were the closest to the originals that I had in my collection and those gun pieces unfortunately aren't LEGO brand, but I still think they look really cool. I don't know what brand they're actually from originally as they came in a collection that I bought from someone, so if you recognize any of them, let me know down in the comments. Overall, this was one of the most challenging builds I've ever completed and was easily the most difficult when it comes to recreating a forced perspective with LEGO. For a piece of bonus trivia, according to IMDB, television broadcasts in Japan for Inception included text in the upper left corner of the screen to remind viewers of which dream level the film was in. I have no idea if that's true, but it sounds like something that would happen. Next up, we have a build that was so much simpler, but still fun to make. Forrest Gump starring Tom Hanks and released back in 1994. As you can see from the original poster, this was really a simple build, but I still chose to include it here as it's a famous movie poster. Getting to build the park bench was fun, and it was challenging trying to pick out a face print and hairpiece that matched Forrest Gump. He has a really short flap top that is really dark brown to black depending on which picture you look at. I ended up going with this piece even though the hair is a bit too tall, and it might have looked better in black. I'm sure others could have been acceptable as well, but I don't think any available piece is a perfect fit. For his tan suit, I was surprised to find this one in my collection from the Iron Man villain Aldrich Killian. He's widely considered one of the worst LEGO Marvel minifigures of all time because of his odd glow-in-the-dark head and lackluster hairpiece, but in this case, his torso turned out to be really useful. For a piece of bonus trivia, Forrest Gump won six Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Actor in a Leading Role for Tom Hanks, Best Director for Robert Zemeckis, Best Visual Effects, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Film Editing. Moving on to what is perhaps the most recognizable movie poster of all time, we have Jaws. For a full disclosure, I actually used an existing LEGO set as the foundation for this build shark. The set is 31088 Deep Sea Creatures, which features a great shark build that I thought would be the perfect size for setting up this poster with a minifigure. The head for my Jaws version is very similar to that set's build, but I did make alterations as needed, such as changing the build for the shark's bottom jaw, which I adjusted to make the teeth more visible. In a man are similar to what we see on the original poster. And as you can see, I changed the color scheme as well. For the backdrop, I first set up a layer of blue bricks and then a layer of translucent blue bricks in front of that to make it look more like water. For the water near the top, I used translucent bricks with just one layer of plastic. But for the bottom layer, I used bricks with two layers so that it would look like the water was getting darker and more ominous as it got deeper. At the top of the build, I used a mix of translucent blue and clear pieces for the water splashing around as the woman swims. And I figured that while I was at it, I would go ahead and make the rest of the shark as well, which continues to loosely follow the general shape of the set previously mentioned. Albeit, I did end up customizing quite a bit of it, like the shape of the back of the body and the fins. For another piece of bonus trivia via The Hollywood Reporter, when Steven Spielberg first heard the Jaws soundtrack from legendary composer John Williams, he originally thought that it was a joke, commenting, that's funny John really, 
But what did you really have in mind? Today, such a comment sounds mind-boggling when it comes to the original score because it's one of the most famous of all time. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future episodes along with other LEGO content. For our fourth movie poster, I have another one of my favorites, with 2001 A Space Odyssey. Like some of the other movies on this list, 2001 has multiple iconic posters. However, for today, I've decided to go with this one since I love getting to build at minifigure scale and thought it would be fun to try to make the octagonal tunnel in LEGO. The poster features Dave Bowman walking down one of the tunnels of the Discovery 1, the iconic ship from the film. I really like how this minifigure turned out. The torso and legs are from the comic version of Rescue from the Avengers flat-headed Hulkbuster set. The helmet is from Galaxy Squad. To add the orange pieces, I used black brackets. The orange space backpack is built using minifigure skate pieces for some texturing, and I was lucky enough to have this sticker, which I added to the tile to give it a pretty accurate look to what we see in the film. For the tunnel build, I had to use a lot of repetition. I made the octagon shape by using a lot of Lego hinge pieces. For the inside of the tunnel, I ended up using a ton of these black snot bricks because I actually had more of them than regular bricks. But I think I think it ended up working out for the best because they provide a bit more texture to the build. At the end of the tunnel, you'll find a space door and the entire tunnel is mounted on a black stand that stabilizes everything while also making it displayable. For a bonus build, I couldn't sit back and make a 2001 Space Odyssey build and not include HAL 9000, the undisputed best character from the film. It's a rather simple build, but I still like how it turned out, and he's complete with a light brick as well. Like the video HAL. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. The fifth build for today's video is actually another from director Christopher Nolan, The Dark Knight, considered by many to be the best Batman film of all time. I chose this poster not only because it's iconic, but also because of that flaming Batman symbol. I knew that making it in LEGO would be a good challenge. Translucent pieces, at least in my collection, aren't that common to begin with, and when I do get them, they're usually the same handful of elements over and over, so I had to attempt to make the symbol with a limited amount of variety. The bat symbol itself is actually created in two separate pieces, one built upwards and the other down. I then used a snot technique to connect the two sections together. I also included a light brick behind it. The other main structure of the poster is of course the building in the background. When looking at the building on the original, I couldn't tell if it actually had two separate colors or if the lighting was just darker on one side than the other. But for my LEGO build, to give some variety, I ended up making two different styles. I used some more of the black 1x1 studs mentioned earlier for windows on this side of the building, and on the other, I used gray tiles. These windows ended up posing the only other major challenge to this build, which was actually attaching the burning bat symbol to its exterior. Normally, it'd be easy and straightforward to just snap it into place. However, the bat symbol would have to be pushed away a single tile width from the building in order to compensate for those window tiles. To remedy this, I offset the attachment point on the interior of the building by one tile by using a recessed snot brick alongside a Lego bracket. I had to include Batman himself, so he's standing out front brooding. Moving on to our next build, I knew I wanted to include The Godfather, and this small build is what I came up with. The Godfather is undoubtedly an iconic film. However, the posters are minimalistic and I couldn't figure out a great way to turn them into a LEGO build. I actually think this may be a time where something like a LEGO mosaic of the original logo and marionette hand, rather than a build based around minifigures, would be the best option. With that being said, I still like how my minifigure of Vito Corleone, the godfather himself, turned out. I used a LEGO tux piece along with the head for J. Jonah Jameson. I used this dark gray hairpiece that's been used for minifigures like Grand Moff Tarkin. However, I think the hairpiece from Grandmaster may have actually been better. For the marionette, I used this LEGO tire iron and attached a white hand. I don't think it turned out that great, but hopefully it at least gets the idea across. This is definitely my least favorite out of today's entries, and I think the Godfather deserves better, but I thought the minifigure was decent, and while I was building, I also made this minifigure for Michael Corleone. For the last entry of today's video, I'm going with E.T. The original poster for this film is surprisingly simple, but at the same time, it looks so good. For my LEGO version, I started by making the moon, which is brick built using some snot techniques to give it a round shape. Elliot and his bicycle are attached using a LEGO clip piece. To give E.T. a place to sit, I use this LEGO cabinet piece with the drawer taken out, and it attaches nicely to the front of the bicycle. Down on the ground, you'll find some builds for the evergreen trees that we see on the original poster. For those, I use some building techniques that I learned from LEGO advent calendars that often include small Christmas trees, and then I just scaled them up for this poster. For the base of the model, I also included some other green tiles to simulate some of the floor of the woods. And with that, we've reached the end of today's video. That was seven famous movie posters, but I think there's so much more potential in this series. So if you would, please leave a comment about which movie 
movie posters you think would be the best to turn into LEGO for Episode 2. And until next time, see you later.